G'day folks, Rod here from Learn to Paint Academy and Learn to Paint TV. Welcome to another exciting episode of Learn to Paint TV. Now this week we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to uh, paint a little garden scene. I was um, visiting my mother recently and took this photo of a nice little um, garden setting there with a little vase of flowers and trees and so on. So I thought we'd have a go at that just as something uh, you know very different from what we normally do. We're still going to use the more method of painting, obviously, our three steps, three colours, and just three brushes, and simplify the process right down. But what we want to do is try and capture that feeling of a bit of sunlight coming through um, in, a, in, a, in a nice sort of garden setting. I'm going to start off with ultramarine blue and the permanent crimson, and just a small flat brush um, for our drawing. So step one of the more method of painting is always drawing in our big shapes. Now, if you have a look at the photo there, um, this is our main sort of center of interest is this vase, got this big tree, there's a line that sort of runs around that garden. Now I'm using a 20 by 24 canvas, a slightly bigger one than what we might normally use um, today. So the back of that garden sort of runs through, sort of like that, there's a path that comes down through here and then it runs that way. So that's sort of the garden bed shape that we need to establish in first. That big tree, it sits around about here, so we're on that line there, and it's running that way. Now it actually leans out of the photo, but I'm going to lean it into the photo, just so the eye is coming in to our subject here. So it's going to sit around about there. We might put some shadow um, out that way and put a little shadow through there. So it's good, that's easy to do. So, so far, not, there's not a lot of difficulty in what we're doing so far. Probably the most challenging part is going to be just getting in this uh, little vase. Now, the, the top of that vase sort of sits around about level there. So what I'll do, I'll just pop that in here. It sort of, it runs that way, and then around that way. And we've got these Lovely flowers that are all uh, sitting in the top there. Okay. Now that's got a little lip on it. This is, you know, as I said, going to be the part that will uh, require a bit of careful thought and painting, but that's okay widens out just in that section there. Okay. And it sort of has the and it comes in thinner in there. And then it gets a little bit wider again. Around that way, and then it's on some sort of uh, cement block, something like that. Now I'll put all this left hand side in the shadow, and what that means is there'll be a shadow running out that way from it. We won't make that shadow too descript though. Okay. Out the back here, there's another garden bed that's sort of sitting there. It's going to be really um, distant sort of values. We want, don't want this to really play an active part, however it is there. And there's a you know, chair sitting over in the garden there. Like so, and there's a little table. In there, and then there's lots of flowers and things around, which again we won't describe those too much. You're going to sit way off in the distance. Now, there is in the foreground, or all around here, there's lots of different clumps of uh, flowers and things. And I think the way that we'll tackle those is I'll just put in a few marks here just as indications 
so you get a feel for it. Um, but the way we'll tackle these is I'm just going to block in an earthy tone and then we'll just work in clumps of uh, flowers and things in and around that. Let's do step two now. All I've done, I've put some more ultramarine blue up, permanent crimson yellow ochre, and a little bit of titanium white. And we've got a big area to cover here, so I'm going to use big brushes, um, at least a one inch flat brush or hog hair bristle brush. And uh, we want to get down you know, our basic values um, pattern here if we can. So I'm thinking that our darkest dark is probably going to be the shadow side of that tree and there, and probably the shadow of this. Um, the bars and then into the, some of the clumps of the grasses it's going to be dark as well but not as dark then the ground is going to be you know a little bit of earthy tone and then out the back we're going to make all that we're going to add white and we're going to really lighten off that value so i'll start with the big tree we'll get get in our blue and our red and we'll just start to get a feel for um what's what here okay so because that's a nice easy shape to block in and that's what step two is all about is just getting our block in of color and values down and we want to use a lot of paint i've got a big area to cover and we also want to uh use a big brush so we don't finicky you know get finicky and muck around with this we'll just start to work in some dark in here So I'm only going to just paint that to the dark side for the moment. And you know, I'm just doing this just to get a feel for our lights and darks within this painting. So it's not going to be by any means complete. Except it's a little bit more dark there. Now, I'm not locked into these, I'm just putting in some shadow patterns and if I need to change those or I don't like them, then I can do that easily. Okay, I overlap that shadow there. Caught back a little with a bit of extra blue. I'm just running a couple of them. The back there. Okay, so an earthy brick tone. We'll run that down here to create a bit of a brick path to about there. I'm not trying to paint bricks here, I'm just creating a, a feel of the path being there. Like so, and that just gives some delineation to the edges of the um, garden bit as well and we'll run that back in that way now I need to get this earthy tone in here I don't want it to be as bright as what we've just done so I'm going to add in some more blue and yellow we sort of want to get it a browny sort of earth tone so it's going to be mostly blue and yellow, but with a touch of red just to looks like I have a fair bit of paint there. Let's just test that. Yeah, it's sort of an earthy tone. And now use this to then sculpt around our bars. And so this is creating the negative shape of the bars there.
So you want there to be a, a difference between this earthy tone and the um, shadow of the bushes that we've already put down, which I think you can pretty clearly see that that is the case here. So it's just a matter of just working my way around those different shapes that we've already got there. So we've got a, we've got a green grass area in here. It's going to be ultramarine blue, yellow ochre, and titanium white. So let's just get that in. And that's probably not a bad tone. Maybe it could be a touch yellower and a touch lighter. Yeah, that's probably better. I like that. So now and I'll start to paint that in. This is going to give us our grass lawn area. And then there's a garden bit out the back there. So I'm just paint this around the shapes of my flowers in this vase here. And the lawns are fairly big area, so technically what I would do is have it a little bit brighter and stronger in tone here and fade it out towards the back there. Uh, but to keep it simple, we won't do that today. Unless you're an advanced painter, then you can give that a try. Uh, but I'll keep it simple with this painting because there is already a fair bit going on in this painting that will uh, be a little bit challenging for some and uh, challenge is good it's what helps us keep growing okay. so we don't want any sort of information or description in this lawn because what will happen is the viewer will just fill the details in. Okay. A little chair there that I put in, so I've just got to work around that. And there's that table. Okay, you can see that tree really pops out of there now. With uh, that dark now against the lighter. Color. Now, we're going to put in like garden beds and things in the back here. So all we'll do for that is just a you know, darker value. And we'll just mix up some different tones and things. And um, get a little bit of variety in there so it looks like there's different bushes and things. put a little touch of color and light in there in step three. So remember all we're doing at the moment is just blocking in color and tone and values. in there just indicate some bushes and so on well, that's about where we're going to leave it for now um, I think that pretty much ends step two which is our blocking and I think we've got a nice little uh, feel starting to develop in this painting and when I get some highlights and so on, on on some of this I think it's going to work quite nicely and uh, we'll end up with a nice little um, painting of a garden setting and uh, it opens up a whole world of possibility you know you can go out in your own garden and take some photos and and uh, you're seeing the process here of how to go about painting that so um, it's exciting you know it gives you a whole new world of things to paint so we'll take a break I'm gonna let this dry off probably take about an hour to fully dry and then we'll come back with step three of the more method of painting and we'll, uh, we'll get this painting looking great then. So I'll see you after the break. Okay, welcome back folks. We're now going to do step three of the more method. Obviously I've given this a good chance to dry off and it's uh, settled down quite nicely. So I'm happy with the way things are going. Um, so now we're going to start to put in the details, the highlights and some finishing touches. I've got our palette. I've got our ultramarine blue, which is going for a bit of a run. Permanent crimson, the yellow ochre and cadmium yellow light and of course our titanium white. Just using a little medium sized brush now. And to that we'll add just a little clip of the yellow ochre 
that'll give us a nice dark browny tone. Okay, as you can see, it's a little bit on the red side, so a little bit more yellow. And just experiment with mixing up a nice brown tree tone. And if I pop it there, that's sort of our middle range. I want the dark on this side and the light on that side. So I'm just going to use something like that. And uh, I'll just stroke it on lightly so that some of the dark that's underneath it there will, will um, still come through. We don't lose that dark. Okay. I'm going to create some variety and tones in there. Now I'll just darken it up a little bit. I'll just take spot there a bit darker okay. and we'll just work that down that side and again I don't want to lose all that dark that we've already put in there okay, a bit of variety in there to get a highlight tone now I'll just take a bit of the yellow ochre and a little bit of the permanent crimson and white and that'll give us a a light orange tone okay so you can see that on the orange side it needs to be a lot lighter for a highlight though because we've got the sun coming in from the right hand side and we want to represent a clip of that sunlight just catching on the edge of this um, tree here Again, we don't have to have that as a solid line. We can leave some of it a little bit broken and leave some of that underpaint to uh, still shine through. Now, this actual vase here is a terracotta kind of colour. So it's going to be yellow ochre with a little bit of the permanent crimson into it. Okay, we'll mix that around. Okay, and that's got a nice kind of terracotta feel. I'll add a little bit of this cadmium yellow light into it. That's our booster colour. Just to warm it up a bit. Okay. And this is really, I think, probably our mid-tone value that we're looking for. I'll just try that in the middle there. Gotta keep our dark side dark, of course. Okay, I think that's gonna work as a colour. It's different enough from the tree colour there. Looks quite dark there, but when I put it up on the canvas here, it looks quite a bit lighter. Because of the darks around it, of course. Everything's relative with colour and mixing colour and if you uh, are keen to learn more about mixing colour you should definitely check out our colour mixing course okay okay now what I'll do I'll take that tone and we'll just darken it we'll just in that corner there our dark is our blue and our red we'll just integrate it into that terracotta colour and that will give us a darkened version of that terracotta colour. And we'll just work that into the shadow side here. Like so. And then we want a highlight colour. Now, this highlight colour we mixed before, we'll just take that, so it'll be connecting with the tree, and we'll just introduce it into the terracotta side there. Okay, so we've got a definitely I've got a lighter value. And we'll just run along the rim there.
And I'll start off with the foliage now main um, bars here. So we'll go, we'll go for a mid sort of green here for the moment. Something like that, okay. And then I'm just going to work that in here. It's probably a little bit too light, so I'll add a bit more blue and red into that. Leaving some of that shadow that we've already painted. There's a few little white spots in there, um, which I'm not going to worry about because when I put the little daisies in, um, that'll pick that right up. But what I'll do now, I'll just add a little bit of cad yellow in, on this side here. I'll just get some uh, to go on two Kalagi, so light brush strokes. Seem to do the trick and think about the shape of these little plants that have all been planted here in the garden bed. Now you can make them whatever types of flowers and things that you would like them to be. Okay, I'm not going to go to that trouble because I want to keep this as a beginner. It's not a botanical lesson. So I'm just going to do very basic basic sort of shapes. And I'm just sort of scrubbing that brush in there. And again, keep plenty of that shadowy tone in there. And you might push one clump a little bit on the redder side, like so. Take a smaller brush now. I'm going to put in the shadow um, tone in here for our little flowers. So blue and the red. Okay. So this is the white flowers in shadow, but that's too purpley. So we'll go back a bit more blue. Okay. Still on the purple side, so I'll get a big swipe of blue. It's now on the blue side, but I think that's probably more accurate. Let's get a big chunk of white in there now. Okay, so now we've got a white that's like a shadowed white rather than a bright white. There we go, that's it right there, isn't it? That's what we want. So I'm going to take big blobs of that paint. Have a look at that there. Big blobs of paint, right? And I'm going to just paint in. Now I think they're little daisies or something, but um. I'm just going to paint in a whole lot of little marks to indicate flowers. Don't have to do this, right? Very easy to over play this. So I won't, I'll stop around about there, okay? So that's a shadow, and then we'll just pop in some little highlights onto those with the bright white, and then some little flower buds in there as well. Okay, a couple out there like so. Now, I think we'll get some pure white. Okay, let's get some nice big chunks of that pure white, and then just clip into these flowers here. Don't lose that shadow that we've already painted in, but... Put those in like that, and then there's sort of a little yellowy center to them. It's yellowy orange. Just going to dab a few of those in. Like so. And I'm not going to put it everywhere. And I'm not going to lose what we've already done underneath with that shadow tone. So I'm going to just 
put it through where some sunlight might be catching. So in effect, it's a, um, a lighter version of that ground tone that we've already put in there. That's now looking quite dark because of the lighter paints that have um, around it. So I think we're going to leave it there, folks, because um, as I said, I want to keep this to a, a level that um, anyone can do it, anyone can have a go. And I think if we look at the photo, that's the photo there. Um, I think we've done a reasonable little uh, recreation of Mum's garden and play around with it. You can turn these clumps of bushes here. I mean, they're, they're really, there isn't that much to them as you can see, but if you want, you could turn them into roses and things like that if you uh, if you wanted to. You could put stakes in there to grow your creepers up and really play around with it and, and develop it even further if you wanted to. But as a basic sort of beginner look at how do you create an intimate scene in a garden setting, I think this has worked pretty well. And uh, there's a lot to take away from what we've done here in terms of separating the back out and you know highlighting and the shadows and and so on, and then really having a focal point, that's what we want the eye to be drawn towards is the focal point. So I hope you've enjoyed this week's lesson. I've certainly enjoyed it, a different subject, and we might do some more along this sort of line um, in the future. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure you check out all the episodes of Learn to Paint TV by going to the web address underneath me, www.learntopaint.tv and go and check out the Learn to Paint Academy. You can take a free course there where I go into a lot more detail the different concepts that we've just talked to you about in this um, project uh, and you can take the free course there so go to www.learntopaint.academy and look for the button that says free course get yourself signed up and, uh, and we'll go into a lot more detail on the free course for you anyway that's enough from me i'll see you next week on learn to paint tv and until then happy painting and cheers for now